Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. Um, it's a great day here in Vancouver. I was up skiing at Cyprus, winter wonderland up on the mountain, and yet it's springtime here in Vancouver. Uh, the snow conditions were just tremendous. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, this whole issue of shortcuts to language learning, but before that I just thought I'd mention that uh, tomorrow I'm hoping to do a video uh, interview with uh, Susanna Reisky and if the technology works I'll put it up on my channel. Uh, we've also completed uh, a series of, uh, well essentially the same video uh, explaining to people just what they're expected to do at Link and I've just uh, recorded it in different languages and I've put it up uh, here on my YouTube channel uh, so you can have a look at it and depending on what your native language is you can hopefully understand a little bit more about Link. Uh, we've had some active discussion on our link forums uh, about uh, things, uh, you know, uh, the usual discussion, what's the best way to learn languages. And some people like to study grammar in traditional ways, some people like to speak from the beginning. Incidentally, I made contact with Robert, who's a very accomplished polyglot from Austria, and uh, who's also a simultaneous, simultaneous interpreter. And I'm going to talk to him and hopefully again put it up as a YouTube video so that we'll see, you know, different people with different perspectives on language learning. And there will be areas where we all agree and areas where we disagree and that's a good thing. I mean, it's nice that people have different uh, perspectives and different things that they like to do. And so getting back to the discussions that we've had uh, at our forum at Link. Um, some people say you got to speak right away, other people say no, you shouldn't. You have the extreme silent period people who say it's harmful to speak uh, and so forth. And there are people, you know, on the internet who have, you know, uh, <clears throat> I think it was, I uh, can't remember his name, who said that he can uh, deconstruct any language in 60 minutes and that enables him to learn it very quickly. Uh, just by using certain, certain um, you know, uh, sentences. Um, and I know Moses McCormick has some such approach. And um, who else was there? Uh, oh, Benny, of course, with his uh, speak, uh, you know, and, and become fluent in a hurry. And, and many of these people are, are good linguists, are good accomplished polyglots. So obviously whatever they like to do works for them. But... In my opinion, there are no shortcuts. There are no hacks, language hacks, as Benny puts it. There is no deconstructing the language. Uh, essentially, there are the three staples. Number one, your attitude. Number two, the time you put in. And number three, your ability to notice what's going on in the language. So, yeah, obviously, no one's going to argue that unmotivated people are going to have a very tough time learning. But the second issue is time. It takes time. It takes a lot of time. So if you're willing to put in five or six hours a day, you'll go more quickly. If you only have one hour a day, it'll take longer and it can take months and months and even years at that rate, depending of course on what your goals are. If your goal is to be able to say a few simple sentences and even to say them grammatically correctly, you can learn to do that quite quickly. However, you have no control over what the person is going to say back to you. And the chances are you won't understand what that person says. Or at least once the conversation gets beyond, you know, how old are you, what's your name, uh, you're going to be lost. Uh, to get to where you can actually carry on a conversation, takes time, time with the language. And uh, I, I don't think really that sitting in a classroom where a lot of the conversation is in your native language counts. Um, I think personally that studying uh, declension tables or other things written in my language, to me that doesn't represent time with the language. If you can spend five hours a day with speakers of the language, surrounded by the language, speaking a little bit, you will improve quickly. If you add to that some deliberate learning activities on your own, you know, where you sort of are aware of what you didn't understand and the vocabulary that you're missing, and then you go and look for it and 
you get right back in there with these people so that you're, you're, you're constantly with the language, you're spending time with the language, you will improve. Uh, you have to put in the time. And we see that here, as I've said many times, immigrants who go to their ESL school, uh, language school, but then don't do anything outside the classroom, they don't improve. Uh, and I've also mentioned the situation in Europe. I was told at a conference that uh, a majority of corporate language learners, they spend an hour in class with an instructor and then an hour to an hour and a half on their own. They won't improve. You have to put in the time. I do not believe that there are shortcuts, language hacks, deconstruction, read the dictionary, study the grammar, study a word list, and away you go. I don't believe it. Whenever I have spent time, and I do, um, and have, you know, reading grammar explanations, studying declension tables, you know, at best I can retain that till tomorrow, but not much beyond. Uh, they have done studies that show that if you take two groups of learners and one group gets a list of vocabulary, uh, you know, unfamiliar words uh, for a text they're about to read or listen to, and another group does not get the vocabulary list, uh, and then they're exposed to this text, asked to read it or listen to it, there is no appreciable difference between the uh, ability of these two groups to understand what they're listening to or reading because they can't retain those vocabulary lists. So there's a lot of that kind of activity where I don't know what the best term is for that. It's this sort of uh, deliberately trying to stuff something in your head in the hope that it will stick. Very little of it sticks in my experience. Uh, the other thing is that a lot of these and, and memory systems and flashcarding and all of these things. Uh, if you like doing them, fine. And to me, the biggest thing is to do things that you like to do. Because if you like doing them, you'll continue doing them. If you don't like doing them, you won't continue doing them. And therefore, they will have re relatively little effect. And, uh, you know, every so often the traditionalist language teachers fight back. I was on another website where some language teacher was challenging me he said you know saying like how do you measure the success of students at link and I say well it depends uh, how happy they are if they're happy then I'm happy oh he said you can't compare uh, the learners satisfaction you can't I think he used the word conflate or something you know whatever uh, to me the word is equate he says you can't conflate learner satisfaction and uh, achievement well, from my point of view, if I'm a learner, to me, achievement is to enjoy what I'm doing and, and feel that I'm communicating better than I was before. I don't need to have a teacher test me, personally. Uh, if someone, who wants, someone wants to go out and be tested, go and take a test, that's fine. But if people at Link say, we're satisfied, we're learning more than we did before, we understand more than we did before, I'm happy, I'm happy. Why should, uh, why should I require that person to take a test? Uh, so a lot of these traditionalists uh, come back and uh, and say, uh, you know, that the, the old way of learning, learning grammar, once you learn, this was the quote, once you learn the cases, you have them. Well, no. If it were that simple, then I would try to do it. But I've tried. I don't have them. I look at those cases in Russian with all the different endings. And after many times of, of looking at that table and reading the rules, I don't have them. But after much exposure, eventually, between the exposure and the occasional review, it starts to sit, stick. You don't have them because you learned, because you studied them. That's simply not true for me, but it may be true for some other people. But I just wanted to say that I think that there are no shortcuts. I think it takes time. And because it takes a lot of time, you're better off to do things that you like to do because that way you'll continue doing it so that the study of the language becomes its own reward. And if you put in the time, you will certainly improve. So there you have it on a very nice uh, day here in Vancouver. Thank you for listening.